waits My Lord remains with me Before the blood ran in these veins The days ordained for me Where written in your book, O Lord Before I came to be the 6th of June 2021. And I want to welcome you into this time, into this moment, into this space. God has called you here. God invites you in and so come. Come and rest a while with the one who knows you more intimately than you even know yourself. Come and rest a while with the one who loves you more than you will ever know. Come, come into this time, into this moment, into this space and dwell a while with the one who loves you enough to pursue you to the ends of the earth, to lay down his life for you, that you might know life, life in all of its fullness. And so come, come and rest, Come and find your, your soul restored, made new. Come. Let's pray. Father God, you, how do we describe you? Language just seems so ineffectual because everything we say, Lord, you are more than. And so you are bigger than we can imagine. You are more loving than we can imagine. You are eternal. Something that we can't even imagine, bound as we are by time and space. You are almighty. Something that we can't even begin to explain. Because we're confined by what we know. Which is how to try and control things in a very small way. And so, Lord, you are more than we can ever begin to understand. And you love us more than we can ever begin to understand. Lord, we try and love those around us and we fail. But you love us more than we can even begin to try. Lord, you love us so much 
that not only do you put us here in this world which you lovingly created, you blew life into each one of us, formed us inside of our mother's wombs, giving us life. And Lord, you give us all that we need to survive in this world. The gift of friends and family. And for that we give you thanks. We praise you. For the food on our table. For the fresh water that runs from our tap just at a turn. And Lord, we praise you for the love that you show us. A love which is unfathomable to us. Where you came, taking on flesh and lived among us, died a horrible death for us and rose again that we might know new life with you, a fresh beginning. So that all of the wrong things that we do, so that all of the things that we mess up, so that all of the mistakes that we make and the wrong things that we say and the ways that we hurt ourselves, others and you can be forgiven. All of them wiped out in that moment on the cross. When you cried out, it is finished. And Lord, for that, we offer you our praise and we offer you this worship. For we come called into this space in the knowledge that it's not what we do, but rather what you have done for us. Lord, that is love. That even before we knew that we were in need of it, you had wiped out our wrongs just because you are God and you love us with a perfect love. And so, Lord, may we come this morning confessing the things that we do, the things that we've done, the things that we've said, the ways that we've thought, which harm ourselves, which cause rifts in our relationships with others, and which cause brokenness in our relationship with you. Cause us to hide in shame. Lord, wipe that out. Wipe out that shame because there's no need for it. For you have already wiped our slate clean. You have cloaked us in your perfect righteousness. So that we are perfect and without fault in your eyes. And so Lord, may we know that forgiveness. May that forgiveness be transformational in our lives. May we know your love for us, even in the midst of the broken lives that we live, as a result of the brokenness of our world. Fill us with your love, with your forgiveness, with your grace, that it might overflow from us, shine out of us, so that it might touch and infect all around us, so that they too might be touched by your love. Father, it's your love, your forgiveness, your grace, which restores us and makes us whole. Enabling us to live life in its fullest. The life that you long for us to live. Not just a life with you in eternity, but Lord, here and now. Free from the chains of fear. Free from the, the binds of shame. Free from the sense of inadequacy that we feel. And so, Lord, rise us up, whole, restored, made new, ready 
for all that life brings. Strengthen us and give us courage that we might share the good news of your coming, the good news of the life that is offered through that with all. In Jesus' name, Amen. What is your personality like? Are you someone who is quiet and likes to keep the peace? Or are you someone who is willing to speak their mind? How far would you be willing to go for something that you really, really believe in? Would you be willing to speak out against it, even if it meant risking your safety or your life? History is full of examples of people who have risked their lives in the pursuit of what they believe to be right. As a culture, we thrive on stories like that. That's why, to a certain extent, we love stories and films to do with heroes. On a big scale, it's why we love Superman, for example, and the other Marvel and DC heroes who fight the evils of the world. Or in fiction, we love Frodo in The Lord of the Rings, or Atticus Finch in To Kill a Mockingbird, those who stand up and fight for good and justice. But we also love the real-life stories of everyday heroes too. Think of Schindler's List or Captain Phillips and all of the countless people every day who stand up for what is right and good. Think about your own life. Has there been a time when you've had to find the courage to do the right thing, even although it might be unpopular with those around you? Or to speak out against something? Or a time when you stood up for someone or something and made yourself unpopular in the process. Why not take a moment to think about it and share it with the people around you? And if you feel brave enough, or, or if you feel brave enough, why not put it in the comments underneath this video if you're watching on our Facebook page. these last few weeks, we've been thinking about what it means to live as those powered and inspired by the Holy Spirit. Who is God calling each one of us to be? What does it mean for our lives to be inspired by God's Spirit, by the Holy Spirit? Today we are reflecting on the life of just one of the disciples, a man inspired, powered, by the Holy Spirit, Stephen. Today's reading is from Acts chapter 7, verses 1 to 3, and then reading again verses 4 to 8 to 60. Acts 7, starting at verse 1. Then the high priest asked him, Is this true? He replied, My brothers, fathers of this nation, listen to me. The God of glory appeared to Abraham, our ancestor, while he was in Mesopotamia, before he had settled in Haran, and said, Leave your country and your kinsfolk, and come away to a land that I will show you. However, the Most High does not live in houses made by men. As the prophet says, Heaven is my throne, and earth my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Where shall my resting place be? Are not all these things of my own making? How stubborn you are, heathen still at heart and deaf to the truth. You always resist the Holy Spirit. You are just like your fathers. Was there ever a prophet your fathers did not persecute? They killed those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, and now you have betrayed him and murdered him. You received the law given by God's angels, and yet you have not kept it. This touched them on the raw, and they ground their teeth with fury. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, and gazing intently up to heaven, saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at God's right hand. 
Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this they gave a great shout and stopped their ears. They made a concerted rush at him, threw him out of the city and set about stoning him. The witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they stoned him, Stephen called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell on his knees and cried aloud, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And with that, he died. Stephen's story begins in chapter 6, when he's chosen as one of the seven Greek Jewish Christians to help distribute food to the poor. But it's not this work that draws the attention of the temple officials to Stephen. Scripture tells us that Stephen was a man full of God's grace and power. It oozed out of him and that he did great wonders and miracles among the people. An opposition rose up against him. Doesn't that sound awful like what happened with Jesus? Those high up in the synagogue argue with Stephen, trying to catch him out. But Stephen's wisdom and the spirit by whom he speaks are too much for the, the um, synagogue officials to argue against. And so those high up in the synagogue plot against Stephen. Where have we heard that before? And they bring charges of blasphemy against him. Stephen is seized and brought in front of the Sanhedrin to have his case heard. And that's where we joined the account today. Stephen is speaking to the Sanhedrin. A wonderful speech in the style of the prophets of old. And you can read the whole speech in Acts 7, which is where we read different bits of, um, from today. But Stephen tells those gathered, in the bits that we didn't read, Stephen tells those gathered that the people of God need to be ready to go where God leads. That's what's in verses 1 to 3 that we read. They must be on the march, ready as Abraham to pull up their tent pegs and go where God may lead them. Stephen tells them unpopular things that they don't want to hear. Israel have become a people rooted in a city in an area, a geographical area. They've built physical buildings. There are synagogues, there are temples in which the people worship and in which ritual and culture have become embedded. And this is how we need to do things here in this building in order for God to be here. And so Stephen tells them the unpopular things that the temple officials, those whose importance is tied up in the importance of synagogue and temple and ritual, tells them something that's deeply unpopular and that they don't want to hear, in the same way that the prophets of old told Israel where they had gone wrong, where she had gone wrong. And so Stephen tells them that the presence of God isn't restricted to any one land or building. And isn't that something that's good for us here in Bonesse to be reminded of at the moment as we wrestle with the idea of which building should be kept for worship if three of us come together, if three different congregations come together and unite as one congregation. But that's not what I want to dwell on today, although I think this speaks into it. Rather, I want us to think and continue on with what Stephen says. Stephen encourages them to think of Abraham, whom God revealed God's self to long before Abraham settled in the promised land. To think of Joseph, whom God was with even in Egypt, and of the beginnings of the people of Israel itself, when God gave the law to Moses, not once the people were settled, but while they journeyed, while they wandered in the desert, pilgrims, sojourners. And in verse 48, Stephen says to them, the Most High does not live in houses, made by human hands. Rather, the time spent as homeless wanderers in the desert, a people on the move, is held up by Stephen to be the ideal. When God was worshipped in the tabernacle, the movable tent, which was carried with the people, in the midst of the people, 
That was where God was, not in the fixed physical building of the temple, but in the midst of the people while they wandered, wherever they were. Stephen, preaching against the temple and all of the ritual that had grown up around it, angers those whose importance depends on the temple, the Sanhedrin. And with their anger peaked, they stoned Stephen to death, the penalty for blasphemy. But Stephen, filled with power and with the grace of the Holy Spirit, speaks out prophetically against the accepted practices of the culture around him, the importance of the temple and synagogue and the perceived importance and authority of those attached to it. And then they turn on him in the same way that they turned on Jesus and in the same way that Jesus did in Stephen's last breaths, he prays for his persecutors that they might be forgiven. And so I wonder, what does this speak to us? Would we find such courage to speak out against the culture in which we live? With the Holy Spirit, yes. Because isn't that what we're called as the people of God to be and to do? To be prophetic? To remind one another of what we are called to be as the people of God as we live in this world. Not as the world does, but to be distinct within it. Not to be of the world, but in it. Speaking into it of God and of godly things. Proclaiming courageously of a different way of being. The Jesus way, the way of love, the way of compassion. To speak up against the wrongs in this world, but not to judge. Rather to speak out against injustice, against poverty, against prejudice, against racism, against sexism, against gender violence. To speak up for those whose voices go unheard. Those groups whom in today's culture experience prejudice. To speak up for them. Refugees and those who are seen as other because of their gender identity or their sexuality. Because isn't that the loving thing to do? To stand in the gap and to reach out, to use our voices and to speak out courageously. And so I wonder, what injustice do you see around you? Where might the Holy Spirit be nudging you to speak out, to proclaim God's presence with courage, to give hope, to love with heart, with soul, with mind and with all of your strength? Why not ask God to enable you to see and to give you courage to act and speak out while we continue our worship together. My strength, my song, this cornerstone, this solid ground, 
firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand flesh, fullness of God and helpless babe, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on that cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied. Here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground His body lay Light of the world by darkness slain Then bursting forth in glorious day Let's join together in prayer. Loving and gracious God, you are with us always. You rejoice with us in good times and you lift us up when we are weary and troubled. You are our rock and salvation and we turn to you now, lifting up the cares and concerns in our lives for others and for our world. 
As restrictions ease, we are thankful that we have more freedom to meet with others. But we are mindful too that the pandemic is still with us and we pray for caution and that we will all play our part to keep each other safe. We pray for all the areas where numbers are rising and new variants are emerging. And we remember all who are caught up in the outbreak connected with Falkirk High School and pray that the spread will be contained. We pray for all who are suffering through illness and heartache. Those who wait anxiously for test results, hospital appointments and operations. And all who are lonely, struggling with isolation, loss and bereavement. Lord, draw near to all who are troubled and take them into your loving care. Lord, we are thankful that in these anxious times there is joy too. And we give thanks for all who are celebrating big life events. We pray especially for two couples from our church family who celebrate their golden wedding anniversaries this weekend. Eric and Davina Reid and Trish and Jim Mallis. A reminder that the circle of life goes on. Lord, may you continue to bless them. And we pray for all who find anniversaries and special dates hard. Those who have lost loved ones or where relationships have ended. Lord, may they too know your blessings. Lord, help us all to find joy, whatever our situation, and to see glimpses of your glory all around us. We pray for all our church family some of whom we haven't seen for a long time. And we give thanks that we are now open more regularly and pray that they will be able to join with us again soon, whether in person or online. Lord, draw near to them, wherever they are. And we pray for all who help to keep the work of your church going and help build your kingdom. And we pray for our world. For areas where there is conflict, may there be peace. Where there is hardship and suffering, may there be mercy and aid. And where there is oppression, may there be freedom. We pray for all who face daily struggles against hunger, malnutrition, drought, poverty, violence and discrimination. Lord, bring peace and healing. And we take a moment of silence now to bring you the prayers in our own hearts. And we join together in the words Jesus taught us to pray when we are together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Lord, you are our rock, our salvation, our fortress. And we give you these our prayers in the name of Jesus, our Saviour. Amen. This week takes us into a new season in the life of the Old Kirk. And for the first time in 15 months, we are going to be offering worship in the building, in person, weekly. That's a huge step for us. And I'm really grateful to all of the people who are making it possible. Those who work behind the scenes to clean the building with the, the enhanced cleaning that has to be done, to to steward the building as we invite greater numbers of people into the building. And it's, it's a huge encouragement to us that all of the waiting is beginning to end and that we are indeed able to move into this new season. We're still living with a pandemic. And so it is a new season. We're not going back to the way things were before. We can't. That is gone. 
And so we move into this new season as we begin to discern and to ask God what it is to be church in the world today. How will we worship together in new ways? How will we meet together in different ways when we can't do things in the way that we once did? And so over the next few weeks, as we worship together in church, we'll continue worshiping online in the online reflections for those who wish to continue in that way. But please feel very welcome to, to join us in the building, even if you've never joined us in our building before. It's an open invitation to come and actually meet with one another in a different way, in a different space, together, and to, to bring our worship together in that one moment to God, to pray together, to hear one another as we share. And so I'm looking forward over the next few months to exploring different ways of doing worship together in person. And I hope and I pray that you will be able to join us for some of that and experience it for yourself. As I say, the reflections online will continue and we'll, we'll have that sense of blended worship for the foreseeable future. Um, and so worship throughout June will, will be in our building. Over the summer months, we're going to do something a little bit different this year um, with a view to hopefully a union taking place between the congregation of Bones Old, um, Bones St Andrews and Carradon Parish Church. The hope is that that will happen hopefully later this year. Um, and so as, as we move towards that, we wondered if it might be an opportunity for the three congregations to come together over the summer months this year, um, over the months of July and August, and worship together, begin getting to know one another. And so we're going to be doing that over the months of July and August. And there'll be more information coming out about that in the coming weeks, where worship will be on different Sundays. And so I hope again, and I pray again, that that, that will be something that you will engage with, that you will enjoy and find some meaning in as we journey together. And so those are the kind of two bits of news that we have to share today. And I hope and I pray as, as we leave this time, as we leave this moment, as we say farewell to this space for another week, that as we go, that the time that we have shared together will go with you. And that the blessing of God, of Father, Son and Holy Spirit will rest upon you will remain with you, will bring you peace, not just today, but tomorrow and every tomorrow thereafter. Amen.